This is George Orwell and I am continuing. So, two years ago, me still um, raising a perfect family in a perfect city, perfect expression, perfect world, perfect life. The definition of perfection, absolute. And this interdimensional portal opened here on earth and it grabbed great amount of attention in the dimensions great because from a dimensional perspective even interdimensionally where I existed it looks like um, the physical form of a body when you look inside it looks like infinity um, it's like you see an entire universe in a physical human body and being started take in the dimensions you're able to take uh, dimensional pictures <laughs> and um, movies if you want basically what you do is you capture a moment uh, that's what we call it when you capture a moment you capture a moment and you're able to take it around into the dimensions and show everyone that moment experience and uh, so news travel fast specifically in a dimensional existence. Um, there was uproar, there was um, debate, uh, communication. Um, that was like after about uh, three months since the portal opened. And some were scared, fearful, because they didn't know what this was exactly. Because you see infinity and you think, fuck, is that like an access to another existence or a universe? until it was realized that it's a complete access into 3D, complete, full, like as though you reincarnated into a physical human body, but that didn't have to go through the birthing process. <laughs> um, interesting. And, it, and you know what it looks like? You see this being sitting, human being, all of a sudden this being comes out of her body and you see her going up, and then another being goes in, and they're like locked in, and they're and when you come and stand in as well, you see them talking to other human beings. I mean, at one stage, you're about 70 beings in this body checking out what the hell's going on. Um, it's amazing. And since then, heaven changed. Um, and since then, uh, we've been introduced to the application of forgiveness. And which opened my eyes to what I had accepted and allowed in my dimensional existence, which was very disheartening. I was extensively angry at myself. I was disappointed in myself. And being disappointed in oneself is, is heavy, really. I, I don't know if anyone's ever really experienced absolute self-disappointment, regret of something that has been done that you know you're not able to change you've done it, it's done, all you're able to do is actually stand up from it and walk from there, shame, actual shame, have you ever experienced shame of yourself to the extent where you're not able to face anybody, uh, that's what I experienced because uh, my life on earth I had specific insights, I made specific statements about this world I mean, I saw what was going on, and what did I do after that? I did nothing. I did nothing. I, all I did was, basically, what statement did I make? I, I said, human beings on earth, continue with your suffering, continue with your enslavement, you know, carry on. I'll carry on in my heaven, in my new existence, in this crystal city, in a galaxy, starting my own family, expressing myself, experiencing myself for the first time while you suffer. The absolute manifested statement of separation, the ultimate. And uh, when the dimensions was introduced to the process of forgiveness, I started realizing what I actually did. What did I actually do? I made a statement on earth, but I did not live that statement. I did not live, live the words I spoke. 
you're on earth. And which influenced me in my dimensional crossover extensively. And if you don't live the words you speak and the statements you make as one with yourself, you're very easily influenced. And just look at my experience. I mean, the George Orwell, everyone remembers you on earth. It's not who I am. And it's not who I ever will be again because it's not who I am. It's not who I ever was really. It's, uh, who beings are on earth is just not who they really are. Unfortunately, and you realize this only in the dimensions at the moment, but we're busy assisting mankind and you know, directing mankind to realize themselves here on earth, do not have to die to realize yourself as who you are. And my experience of realizing that I just continued with my beautiful heavenly existence and not taking into consideration that the rest of humanity is still suffering on earth, is still enslaved on earth, is, is sad, it is um, shameful and regrettable. And that moment when I stood and I, and I saw what I had done, and what I accepted and allowed, that I did not stand up, that I did not realize that I, that that I did not realize to stand up, to take my power and, you know, ask questions, even after I died. To ask questions about why is humanity suffering like this? Why is humanity enslaved? Why is it that only when you die, you experience, you have a heavenly experience? Everything is profoundly magnificent. And it's as though that profound magnificence of your experience when you die takes you over um, to the extent where you forget your life on earth, you forget humanity, you forget everyone else on earth and, and, and you allow and accept yourself to continue in a heavenly, in a profound heavenly, magnificent, beautiful existence such as I had in a crystal manifested city in the universe and, not, and, and I say, and I sit there going, ah, oh, you know, I'm in heaven, I'm fine. I'm experiencing myself for the first time, I'm living, people on earth continue to suffer, you know, you'll get to the answer when you die and cross over. I was disgusted at myself, to be honest, I was really disgusted at myself, and it was a really difficult realization when I saw what I had allowed and accepted to just have humanity suffer, and I didn't stand up and do anything about it, I didn't take my power. Um, so I'll continue in the part three section. There's still a little bit more I'd like to share. Thanks, this is George Orwell.